Hello everyone. Today, let's begin our second course for Grasshopper in Rhino. And today we are going to talk about a very important topic in Grasshopper. It's called the Curve Attractor. Once you Google this, you're going to see a tons of photos in both in 2D like this and 3D like this. And the logic in between is very, very simple. It's just like you're going to change the shape, the scale, or the rotation of certain cells or the units based on the distance between the center of the units to the curve, okay? So this kind of gradients is being guided by this distance in between the curve and the center of those cells or those shapes, straightforward. And how are we gonna do that in Grasshopper? Let's begin. First, I'm gonna go to the vector and pull up this hexagonal shape. Here, it's just a bunch of grids, right? If we bake it, we are gonna get a bunch of hexagonal shapes, right? So, and that's what we're gonna get. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is gonna be put the size. I'm, I can change the size to 2.222, doesn't matter really. And then I will change the number on the X direction or the number on the Y direction. Right here, I'll just do uh, 22 to um, 11, make it simple. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to draw a curve, right? In order to make this a little bit more organized, you can use those tabs on the top, on the left, on the bottom, on the right to organize those uh, number sliders. And then the next thing I would do is I would draw a curve, okay, whatever shape you want it to be. Just we're gonna use this curve as our reference to calculate the distance in between the curve and the center of each sales. So this component has two outputs. One is its sales and one is the points at the grid centers. So if we take it from there, we're just gonna get a bunch of the centroids or the centers for each of its individual sale, right? Which is amazing. We got the curve, we got the center. We need to calculate the distance between those centers to the curve, right? So there's a component here, so convenient, called curve closest point. We plug the curve, which is right here. We can select here, right click, select one curve, plug it into the component, and then we can plug the points, right? We get a bunch of points on this curve. What are those points mean? We can float the cursor here and read it. It says point on the curve closest to the base point. For example, for this point specifically, the closest point it has on this curve might be somewhere here. So if we draw a curve or draw a line between this point and this point, it is the closest distance between this point and this curve. And this is just a projection on this curve. The next thing is parameters. It's a very complicated concept. Let's save it for the future. And the last one is the distance, which is the key values that we want to get, okay? So we are going to take that. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to find a component called scale. I can find it by left double click it, um, scale, or I can find it over transform here. Then I can click it here and drag it here. The next thing I will do is I will read component scale. It says scale on object uniformly in all directions. Straightforward. And then there are three inputs. The geometry you want to scale, the center of scaling, and then the factor. So if I put the sales in right now, the default center of scaling is its origin, 0, 0, 0. And the default factor for scaling is 0 0.5. So they basically scale everything based on this uh, origin points. And then the factor is 0 0.5. And I don't want that. I want it to scale everything based on the points that has been generated by this component, which is the center of each cell, okay? So I want it to plug it here. And then the last one, which is a factor, I don't want it to be 0 0.5. But instead of 0 0.5, I want it to be the distance. And then we get something like this. You can see that we are getting some crazy shapes out there is simply because the distance are too big. They are not just 
0.5 or 0.8 or 0.9. Some of the distances are like 20 or 40 in between, right? So how are we going to do that? We are going to try to put a limit of this kind of distance. Let's say the distance, the smallest one, I want it to be 0.1 and the biggest one, I want it to be one, right? In order to do so, we are going to introduce a new concept called remapping, which is remap numbers. And before that, let's look into another component called series. So what is a series? You can read the output by using this panel, and then it's just zero, two, nine. And when we float it here, it says, create a series of numbers. You can play with the start, the step, and the count. And it's very straightforward. Right now, the start is zero. And if we put it two, right, it still have 10 numbers, but it's from two to 11. And then if we change the step from default one to two, and then we will get two to 20. Each one has two as step in between. Or if we change it to three, it's two, five, eight, 11, instead of two, four, six, eight. Right, you can see this is very handy. And then if we are change the count from 10 to three, we are just gonna get three numbers, right? So right now let's just generate a list from two to 17, and then plug this into this remap numbers. We will see that it works as remap numbers into a new numeric domain. So right now the domain is two to 17, and then we're gonna plug all the numbers, all the values we're gonna remap into this V input. And then the next thing is the source. In order to get that, we can come over here and find the bounds, which is plug here, we are just going to get 2 to 17. We plug it in, and then the target is default 0 to 1. And then we will plug this into here. We will see that 0 to 1, right? So the proportions between different numbers are still going to be preserved within this domain. But rather to have a domain from 2 to 17, now it's 0 to 1. And of course, you can change this target domain by bringing your new numbers. So it's like 0 0.5 to 3. Plug it in here, plug it in here, and then you can get that. The smallest number within the new series is 0 0.5, and the biggest one is 3. And the step in between is 0 0.5. So this is kind of thing we want to plug it back to the scale factor. And let's try that and see what's going to happen. OK. So let me delete everything else. And then let's plug it into the source domain. And then we will plug the value to the distance. OK. We will replace this factor by using this one. Now it looks kind of weird and bulky. Uh, it's because it's not 0 to 1. So if we bring it to 0, from 0 to 1, it looks like this. And I can ensure you that there's something wrong here. And I'll explain to you what's going on. OK, so first of all, it says cannot scale with factor 0. That's That can be fixed if we put it up here, 0 0.1. And then it can fix that problem because some of the smallest number becomes zero here, then the scale component refuses to take that. Another big problem is here. So this involved in a very complicated concept here. It's called the data tree in Grasshopper. But in other programming language, it's always called a list. So let's see what's going on. So if I read the number here, right, and then I will see list zero, list one, until list 21, right? Those are the list names. And then within each list, it has zero, one, two, three, four, to 10 items, which is 11 items. Because in computer languages, most of languages starts its index as zero. So it has 10 plus one items in it. What is this 22 and the 11 number come from? Well, it comes from here, the extend X input and extend Y input. What does that mean? That means that each of the cell within this grids has its ID, and then they divide those cells into 20, 
two different groups and each group have 11 items. For example, the first group of seal, which are those ones from item zero to item 10 are the group that I'm selecting right here. Okay, this is group zero, 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 and the first item, which is item zero. This one is group zero, 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 item index one, which is this cell right here. So this data is reflecting the ID structure of this grid. And since it's a two-dimensional grid, it can be described by a two-dimensional list. Why it's called two-dimensional? Because first it has a bunch of lists and within the list, there are a bunch of items. So the list is one dimension and within the list, there are items, it's another dimension. Okay, so this is a concept of list. And now let's go back to the bounds. The bounds is connected to the distance and the distance inherited all the data structure all the way from the grid, okay? So when they calculate the minimum and maximum, the bounds calculated 22 times instead of one time. Right now, I want to calculate all the sales, its distance between the center to the curve, right? I don't want, I don't care its ID. I don't care if it's on the first row or the second row. I don't care if it's on the first list or the second list. So I want to break down this kind of list structure. Right now, this bounce calculated 22 times because within this list, it finds the smallest number and the biggest number. Within the second list, it finds the smallest number and the biggest number, right? You can see that in each of the column, you can find a super big one and you can find a super small one, so on and so forth. I want to ignore all the list structure. I just want to calculate one time. What I can do is I can use this component called flatten. So I flat the tree and then let's look at the difference again. So before it has 22 lists and right now it only has one list. And before 22 lists, every list has 11 items. Right now it's just one list have 242 items, right? This is exactly what I want. And then if I plug this into the bounds, you will only get one domain, which is from 0 0.065608 to 23.282271, okay? And that's what we want. Now we get a uniform distribution of how this distance behave between different cells and different curves, right? So. Now it looks much better. And then if we hide everything else, we will get this kind of shape, right? And this is exactly what we want. Since I realized that this part can be extremely tricky, I just want to recite what I have just presented. So let's float the cursor here. And we realize that this distance has 44 lists, 43 plus one, which is 44. And each list has 19 values or 19 items. And then after using this bounds, they find the smallest item and the biggest items within the list, okay? So we plug the panel here again. For example, in the first list, they have 19 numbers. And the smallest one, it says 17.6. We find it here, 17.6. And the biggest one is 46.7. Okay, it's the last one is 46.7. They basically wrap it up and saying that, okay, no matter how many lists you have, I will find the smallest and the biggest number within that list. Okay, so since you have 44 lists, I will give you 44 ranges. And if we flatten the data, okay, by using this thing called flatten tree, what we will see is the following. We will see only one list and this list contains 835 numbers. It basically threw out all the data structure and just put all the data into one list and which has 836 items. And then they find the smallest data within this 836 items and make this new range, which is from 0 0.01 to 46. 0.7 and use this bounds 
as a source domain. And if we use this domain as the source domain to describe the distance between all the cells to the curve, then we will preserve the overall relationship between the cells and the curve instead of individual relationships within each column, right? Each column is just one list within this whole panel. That's it. And also you can update this shape by only changing the curves around it. And you can make it much more complicated by simply um, extend the X and Y directions. So I will do that. Looks pretty cool. And then if I say that, oh, I want to make this thing more complicated, what I can do, there are tons of ways you can do it. First, I'm thinking that if I can rotate it or not, if I want to rotate each cell based on its distance to the curve that I just draw here, how are we going to do that? Easy. We can take this output that has been scaled by this component and rotate it. Just type rotate and then plug this in to geometry. And when you want to rotate something, of course, you want to have a geometry that you want to rotate. And secondly, you want to have an angle that you want to rotate it. And the last thing is you want to have a plan, which is a center points you want to rotate. Right now, the default plan or the default center is this origin, 0, 0, 0. And again, I want it to be the center points for each of the cell, right? The next thing I want to play with is its angle. And as I mentioned, the angle should be dominated by the distance in between its center and the curve. And the next thing I want to do is only plug the angles here and read it. You can see it, rotation angle in radians instead of degrees. And I'm not a radians person. I love degrees more. So I'll just use a degree instead of radians. I'll plug it here. And if I type in 180 degree, and I'll bring it in, and I'll come over here. I'll hide this, and then I will rotate it. Right, this is what's going to happen. But right now, it's not affecting by the distance. What I need to do is I will just copy this and bring it here. And instead of have 0 to 1, I'll have 0 0.1 to 180. And then I will plug it in here. Then I will bring this new remapped numbers into the degrees. Okay, it's not that clear on the edge here, but you can see much better right here. And if we make the domain end a little bit bigger on this part, we can see some more dramatic change right here. And if we can make this uh, domain start a little bit bigger too, we can do so by changing the input here. Okay, so if you see that there are too many overlaps here, Again, we can decrease this domain end a little bit. You can see that only few lines of codes or few scripts or few components can generate some very interesting structure or very interesting facade. And again, this is just the beginning. We can spend hours and hours on this file and make it much more complicated. But all the basic logic is just to calculate the distance between each individual cell and this curve. Okay, so again, here I can fix it a little bit too. And in terms of rotation, I can make it 180, make, make it bigger. And lastly, if we want to put a surface based on the edge of those cells, we can just come over here and find the boundary surfaces and plug it in. And then we can see it here. We can all bake it and then bring it into Rhino, right? Okay, so that's what we're gonna talk about for this tutorial. And thank you so much for your attention. See you in the next one.